G'day and welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think and we're currently working our way through Jim Caronius's list of 100 integrals. This is number 30, the previous one, uh, number 29, looked identical except for these, the 3 and the 5 were reversed and we'll see that this makes a, a rather interesting difference to how we resolve or evaluate the integral. But again, being a simple fraction with a single trig function involved, we usually solve this by substituting using T notation or half angle notation. So, on the side, we let T, representing tangent, equal the tangent of X on 2. There's our half angle. This is called T notation. Uh, we find the derivative derivative tangent, 6 squared, x on 2, and we multiply by the function inside, or at least the derivative of it. And multiplying both sides by 2, we get 2 dt, putting dx up here is 6 squared, x on 2, dx. In fact, I'm going to move the 6 squared down here. And 6 squared is 1 plus tan squared. X on 2. And we know what tan squared is. We've managed to rearrange the equation and get our expression back in terms of the tangent of x on 2. We can replace tan x on 2 with t. So this will be 2 dt on 1 plus t squared. So that's what we're going to replace the dx by. There it is. Now, cosine of x is 1 minus t squared on 1 plus t squared. I'm, after this series is finished, I'm going to produce a series of videos describing particular methods of evaluating integrals and looking at particular standard integrals. And uh, I'll deal with all this half angle notation quite thoroughly then. But for the moment, you'll just have to trust me. I, I don't want to use up a lot of room on the board, and I don't want to make this video unnecessarily long. But cosine of x, as I said, will be 1, sorry, 1 minus t squared on 1 plus t squared. And dx we're going to replace with this expression, 2 dt on 1 plus t squared. Now, notice by the way I use parentheses here, even though that bar, that vinculum, which it's called, I suppose if you want to show off somewhere, it's the Latin term for it, the bar in a fraction, and, and also by the way, the bar in a radical sign, this bar is called the vinculum, not the whole radical, but just the bar part. And it acts as a grouping symbol in its own right, but this is a psychological help. You sort of reduce your risk of making silly mistakes by using it. Now, 1 times 2 dt is 2 dt, and we're going to multiply out. 3 times this, I'm going to just write as 3 lots of 1 plus t squared, and 5 lots of this times this, the 1 plus t squareds divide out and we're left with 1 minus t squared. We'll expand this denominator and see what we get. 3 plus 3t three squared, this will be 5 minus 5t five squared. And that will give us the integral of 2 on 3 plus 5 is 8. And 3t squared minus 5t squared is minus 2t squared. And running out of board, I'm going to copy this up here. So let's just erase this with my very expensive eraser. I think we'll just get rid of this as well to declutter the board somewhere. 
And I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by 2 as I do it. So we've got the integral of 1, and half of this is going to be 4 minus t squared dt. Good. So we've finally simplified this structure to this. And this is a difference between squares. And that suggests very strongly that we can use partial fractions. So I'm going to write this as two fractions. And I'll, call, I'll use a and b as the numerators. And 4 minus t squared is 2 minus t times 2 plus t. So uh, I'll put 2 minus t here. And 2 plus t there. Strictly speaking, we should have this because all of that is multiplied by dt. So I guess I'm being a, a little pedantic, but it's a bit like a length times a breadth. So hence the use of parentheses. Now let's find the values of a and b. The, the denominator is going to be 2 plus t times 2 minus t. 4 minus t squared, not a problem. The numerator is going to be a times 2 plus t, so it'll be 2a plus at, and b times this, 2b minus bt. And that's going to be 2 lots of a plus b, and taking t out as a common factor, t lots of a minus b. And it, this numerator, has to equal 1. Well, we don't want any t values in our answer, so this must be worth 0, and if a minus b is 0, then I'll, I'll put here equal 0, strange way of writing it, and therefore a must equal b. If a equals b, then a minus b is 0. So that's our first clue. And the second clue is that this part must be equal to 1. So a plus b must equal 1 half. That's if 2a plus b equals 1, then a plus b equals a half. And if they're equal, then they must be a quarter each. So I've got a quarter here and a quarter here. And I'm going to write that as 1 over 4 out the front. So a quarter times 1 will be a quarter, and a quarter times 1 will be a quarter. Both plus a quarter, which is great. Uh, so that resolved quite nicely. So there are partial fractions. This is a little, little bit different from the previous integral, in which we had a positive sign here. Now, I hope you recognise that both of these look like logarithmic structures. So let's do a quick test. The derivative of 2 plus t is in fact 1. So that's perfect. The derivative of 2 minus t is negative 1. So I'm going to put two minus signs here. There are other ways of doing this. I could separate it into two integrals uh, and so on, but this will be enough. And that, that negative 1 is the derivative of this. So, integrating. I'm going to leave the quarter out the front. Integrating this is going to give me negative or minus the natural logarithm of 2 minus t plus the natural logarithm of 2 plus t plus a constant, of course. Now, this will be 1 quarter times the logarithm. Notice we have a difference between logarithms here. We have this logarithm minus this logarithm. And that means that we have a division taking place. So it's a logarithm of 2 plus t over 2 minus t. Now, strictly speaking, Tangents can take a variety of values from minus infinity to plus infinity. 
Therefore, these could take negative values. So, strictly speaking, we should have used absolute value signs. And I'm running out of room again, so I'm going to squeeze this in over here. We now have to substitute back t equals tan x on 2. So we substitute that in here and we get 1 quarter times the logarithm of 2 plus tan x on 2 over 2 minus tan x on 2 absolute value. Since that's one expression now I'm dispensing with the brackets plus c. So isn't it interesting if you've seen the previous video what a difference this sign makes. When it was positive in the previous video we ended up with an inverse tangent function. When it's negative we end up with partial fractions and two logarithmic functions that can join together and we end up with this rather unusual expression as our solution. So there it is. I hope you've found that studying the, the T notation or using the T notation has been useful and I, I hope you've watched both videos and found it interesting comparing the two some quite nice little uh, insights into an integration there. I'm not going to comment anymore. I thank you for watching.